Hi everyone and welcome to our 10 minutes with series where we're spending 10 minutes getting to know all of our wonderful contributors. Uh, today I'm joined by Phil Sturgeon who is a tree planting powerhouse. Phil is currently uh, cycling around the world and he's planting trees with ecology. So welcome Phil um, and what an amazing story you've got. So shall we start off if you want to just introduce yourself and your background and we'll kind of go from there. Yeah sure, um, thanks for the intro. Um, I am uh, I guess a software engineer by trade and I um, I'm super into cycling. I've been a, a bike nomad for, for two years now. Um, I was living in New York for a while, but visas are hard and wasn't allowed to stay there anymore and, and wasn't quite sure where to go. So I've just been going everywhere instead. And you're currently, whereabouts are you? Uh, currently in Vienna. I've just finished a big bike trip from Amsterdam to Croatia because I agreed to run a half Ironman there. So I had to cycle down there <laughs> and then do an Ironman, which was a bit of a mission. Um, but now I'm taking the train home. They've got electric trains throughout most of Europe. So I don't feel too guilty about doing that. About jumping on a train. No, yeah, yeah. I've been on a couple of those. They're, they're actually really, uh, some of them are very comfortable as well. Very nice trains. Um, and, and, and Phil, you're responsible for planting over 100,000 trees with ecology. You are top of all the leaderboards and you've got all the badges how did this all happen like what what what's the story that got you involved with ecology how 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 did this happen how did it come to be that you've been planting all these hundreds of thousands of trees <laughs> yeah um so i was cycling around some pretty interesting places and, and just noticing a lot of deforestation kind of everywhere i went you know like uh started off in the canary islands um because that was my escape from new york i, I took the, the cheapest flight somewhere interesting i could find um and um, yeah, was in, was in the Canary Islands cycling around and it, it is quite magic in a way that you go around one corner and, it, and it's like you're in kind of the Canadian Rockies and there's just trees everywhere and you go around another corner and it's like you're in Idaho, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Utah with all those crazy rock formations and, and it's just a dust bowl and there's no trees anywhere. Um, and I, I looked up kind of, there used to be a lot of trees there, but they've been cutting them down ever since folks turned up there um, hundreds of years ago. Um, and then took a ferry across to Spain. And again, the whole South was just a dust bowl. I literally got hit by tumbleweed a couple of times. Um, there's just kind of huge deforestation from just um, kind of aggressive agriculture and, um, you know, vineyards everywhere, which aren't as, as magical and beautiful as a lot of people think. Mm. Um, and it's just kind of desert and sand and, and, and really quite, quite miserable in a lot of ways because the, the, there's these huge valleys that everything's been cut down to replace some of these squat little vines. So uh, I was just getting like vicious headwinds in the face and, and day after day after day of just slogging through what shouldn't be desert, but now is mm. um, with like really bad headwind and, and no shade to hide. Maybe kind of think, you know, how, how can we go about raising some money for trees? And I started to think about kind of using my software background to, to create some sort of website where people could sign up with a monthly subscription and pay to, to fund reforestation and, and maybe do one-off donations and, then luckily I found out that already exists. So <laughs> that was beautiful timing. I was like, great, that's less work for me to do. Um, and uh, so yeah, using ecology, um, the, the, the gift uh, to, you know, uh, gift more trees button was added so that every profile kind of became a fundraising page. And, yeah. and that meant I could go about kind of getting people on the internet and getting my you know, friends and followers and, and people reading the blog and just anyone that would listen um, to start donating trees for, for kind of this crazy adventure of me trying to cycle around basically every country in Europe. Um, <laughs> so I went on a really zigzagged weird line, just cutting the corners off. And like, uh, the rule was you have to sleep there for one evening. So I just like bivy bag in a Slovakian swamp and just get out in the morning. Um, but <laughs> managed to get to about 32 countries um, in the space of oof, about, about nine months before injury kind of laid mm. me up for a while. But um yeah, the whole way, just kind of the, the, the stories and, and posts on social media um, were kind of making people more aware of the effects of climate change kind of outside their day-to-day -day lives, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I was taking photographs of fires, floods, deforestation, um, just kind of everything, vicious heat waves. Um, the more I posted about struggles, the more donations I got. And yeah. Um, there was a few days where, you know, I, I was getting heat exhaustion every day uh, for weeks at a time cycling through kind of um, Croatia and, and um, Macedonia and, and uh, Albania and got hyponatremia a couple of times, got heat stroke a couple of times, um, just all sorts of 
crazy things were happening. Uh, so casually, <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but you um, basically the. With yeah. regards to this 100,000 tre trees in your forest with ecology, though, I guess, like, like you say, you're kind of using it as a fundraising page almost. You know, people are seeing your adventure kind of thing across a continent, documenting what's, what's going on in, you know, what, what you're seeing with your own eyes. And people are, are just donating trees, I guess, is a, mm -hmm. is a long and short. That's such a cool, such a cool idea. I'm very jealous as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was so, really fun. Lots of good and lots of bad. <laughs> yeah, it was going to lead me on to my next question was what's your kind of all of this adventure on your bike? Where's what any favorite memories, any favorite places that you stayed or out of all these countries, any particularly beautiful ones that stick in your mind or what? what? Yeah, I, I think Macedonia is probably one of the prettiest countries that I've been to. There's this yeah. um, Kota Bay where you kind of cycle along the, the mountains on the coast and then there's just kind of a gap in the mountains where the sea sneaks in and the, the, the mountains kind of encircle it and it's just like this lake where every single side you're looking at like straight cliff faces thinking how the hell am I going to cycle out of this <laughs> and you end up zigzagging up one of the mountains but um, I mean apart from all the natural beauty one of the things I've loved the most has just been kind of the, the acts of random kindness and generosity from people. Um, a lot of people kind of see my my rather bonkers looking bike you know carrying everything i own and they always have questions and want to talk to me and just random things like um you know in bosnia a, a, a truck driver wanted to talk to me a little bit about what i was up to and we talked about climate crisis and um you know he ends up buying me a, a lemonade and i'm like how, mu how much money is that worth okay that's like 20 treats so i put that in um and then a, a bike shop in serbia um does a bunch of work on my bike for free because they like my story and they're like just post about us on instagram and uh, yeah. i was like okay another couple of hundred trees for that work and Someone yeah. lets me stay at their house and I'm like, okay, they've given me dinner and cider and topped up my hip flask. So that's a thousand trees, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just whenever someone did something for me um, that, that saved me money, it just meant I could put that money uh, into the trees. So that's, that's how we got a lot of them as well. I think you're right though, as well. Like any of the kind of solo travel that I've done in my time, you're always, it, it is, it's cheesy almost, but the people make it so much, don't yeah. they? It's, it's, it's those little random acts of kindness that really, really make it, I guess, an adventure, a journey, you know, as well. And aside from, you know, not to trivialize it at all, but aside from the 100,000 trees, you know, this is an awesome adventure that you've been going on. And a, a low or no carbon one, I guess, was, was originally the point, wasn't it? Is to, mm -hmm. to have as little impact as possible in, in going, you know, going on this travel, you know. Um, I know as well, we're going to, hopefully we'll bring you in on the, on our panel on sustainable tourism. So we'll talk more about that as well. I think low carbon and slow travel, really important topic. So we'll discuss that in a bit more depth in terms of what people should take away from its time. You know, we're trying to encourage everybody to take away from all video sessions, you know, one thing that people watching at home can do, um, or an action they can take or something that they can sort of commit to what do you reckon what, what's one thing that people can take away from your story and from its time at large that they can take away and and, and be more climate positive do you think uh, I think one one thing I've heard people say to me a lot is you know I'm, I'm sleeping in my tent to try and keep my carbon footprint down I'm trying to eat as you know as many plants as I can and, and mm -hmm. leave the animals alone and, and do all of the things that you hear about often about lowering your footprint and people say well that's easy for you living on a bike you know you haven't got a house <laughs> or a car or anything else but yeah. Um, I honestly think it's it's much harder to live a, a, a low carbon lifestyle when so many elements are out of your control. You know, like if I find the one restaurant in town after I haven't eaten all day, I'm going to eat a, a bloody steak if that's all they're going to sell me. Um, whereas if you live at home and you have the ability to plan and you can get you know food from anywhere, there's all of these kind of um, uh, vegetarian subscription boxes and, and various different services. So if you have the ability to kind of plan your life beyond a few hours ahead of time, um, you, you have the uh, ability to do quite a lot of things. You know, you can organize carpools, you can, you can, you know, get a bike or you can kind of move house to somewhere that's, that's better with your, your travel routes. Like mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of things that people consider to be kind of difficult and invasive um, in, in their normal lives uh, are a lot easier when you can kind of really think about the change you're going to make this month and the change you're going to make next month and just, keep on kind of making small changes uh, around the place with what you eat or where you, where you store your money or, you know, whatever it is, how you get around, you can, you can control all of those things quite simply, really. So it's a kind of take an active, you know, perspective on being climate conscious, I guess, yeah. broadly and think all the things that you have control over. Yeah. That's a really, really special, 
special thing and such a good point. And hopefully with its time, we'll, we'll inspire some pledges to climate action through that. Well, incredible. Thank you so much for joining me, Phil. Um, yeah, that was 10 minutes uh, with Phil Sturgeon. <laughs>